Okay, when you're shooting a client, what's the most common fear you run into with people that you're photographing? Good question. The most common fear that I run into with any client is they have a fear that they're going to look old, tired, or heavy. It really comes down to that. They may not voice that, but that is the big fear of when someone sits in front of a camera that they will look old, tired, and heavy. And so it's my job to make sure that that doesn't happen. Okay, that leads to my next question. What are some of the tools of the trade that you use to help people feel relaxed, comfortable, and just looking great? We always hear you have to make someone look comfortable, make them feel comfortable, and but how do you do that? I'm just so interested in people, and I'm interested in people's stories, and the, um, the, the bonus, the benefit of that now as a photographer is that's when you bring out the most comfortable side of somebody. Right. And so I ask them, do you have any kids? Do you have any pets? My client yesterday, as I'm shooting, her smile would start to get a little bit fake. And I would just say, think about Binky. How's that little Binky? You know, I knew that she had this dog. That's her life. As soon as you mention somebody's pet, they glow. It is, it is such an easy tip to, uh, to find out if they have pets, talking about their kids, maybe not so much their spouse. Um, another simple thing, a stool, okay? Wh when someone can rest their feet on something, like I'm doing right now, um, the body language is huge. I wouldn't necessarily uh, start a client with a standing shot. Like if you have your options, right? Unless you're shooting, you know, unless you're shooting a, a model with suits, in that case, you're shooting a model and they're paid to be comfortable. But otherwise, if you're doing a portrait of someone and you have a few setups, I always try and start with them sitting down because then they don't have to worry about what do I do with my body and, and uh, they're sitting and they're comfortable. And another thing is when, when somebody has their hand like, um, you know, by their neck or, or by their face, there is this comfortableness that happens. You know, people feel comfortable when they, when they get to adjust things. I'll either have the client like, you know, put, I'll tell them, give them direction to move their hair out of their face or put your hand behind your neck and, um, or I'll go over and I'll uh, touch up their makeup a bit. Sometimes even if they don't need it, I'll just sort of pat around here or get rid of a little bit of shine. And there's that human interaction that, just come make, make somebody comfortable leaning on something leaning against a wall people are very comfortable um, just make sure that they're not smushing their body or smushing their face right you could say put your hand like that but don't do like that because that is a pain to retouch that is not how do you draw the kind of emotions out that you're looking for i think i think one of the things that we always try to do is keep the set as small as possible. I think, you know, we've all we've all been to the sets where there's like um, a cast of a hundred behind the photographers, and everybody's talking on their cell phones and blackberries, and um, it, you know, being in front of that is very disconcerting. So a lot of times, it's like even if we're set up in a huge studio, we'll find a little corner and kind of, you know, create a tiny intimate space for the subjects where. It's really all about them and being in front of the camera and they can kind of zone out everybody who's around. As much as I can, try to keep those people in a separate room so it's just, you know, myself, a stylist, and the celebrity. And it's, it, um, a lot of times getting rid of all those distractions, um, I think people react better to the shoots. Well, the biggest thing that I would say is anybody who wants to be a portrait photographer is you have to go out there and learn to work with people and shoot a lot of photographs. Go up to people on the street and, you know, take a photograph of them. You know, learn to approach strangers because you're going to do that forever. I mean, most of the people that I've photographed, I'm photographing them for the first time. And it's, you know, go up, introduce yourself, tell them what you'd like to do, um, why you'd like to do a shot, involve them in the process. And, um, one of the greatest pieces of advice I ever got from a uh, photographer is when I was starting out, somebody said, go out and find 50 strangers, approach them and, and take a portrait of them that 
that shows something about themselves. It's not just the exercise of, you know, I want to take a shot of you, but do it in a way that each photograph reveals a little bit about the, the subject. And I think that type of an exercise makes it so much easier to be in front of a camera. Brian, any other kind of practical points of exercises or things that you would recommend? I think one of the important things is a lot of the portraiture that I do is environmental portraiture. And that's really about the subject and the location. So when you're doing environmental portraits, what's going on behind the subject is just as important as what they're doing. So you have to pay as much attention to you know, the backgrounds that you want. You want the background to be interesting, but you want to get rid of all the distractions in there. It's really a case that less is more. Everything you take out of a photograph that's distracting makes your point that much stronger. So if you're doing an environmental portrait, it's like you pay attention to every bit of the frame, not you know just your subject, but how your subject is in terms of interaction with the background. Gotcha. Although a lighting plan may be complicated, you may have lots of things going on. What I try to remember is that even though I'm adding little lights here and there, the net effect has to be something that is simple and pleasing for me. I, you know, there's a reason you don't see lots of photographs with all kinds of cross-lit shadows and so forth on things, because they end up being elements that you don't want, that, that um, are not interesting. And I mean, I really like what natural light does, uh, so I tend oftentimes to, to replicate that when the situation you know, requires it or I feel like it's going to work for that. I, I want to have um, something that if I'm imitating the natural light, I really want it to look like the natural light and have people go, oh, we had a nice light that day and not have them think, oh, you lit that. Because if you're trying to make it look natural, the worst thing in the world, I think, is to have it, to give all these clues that it's just lit by you. Uh, but then there's all kinds of ways. I mean, fashion shooters do it all the time where you light somebody in an interesting way that isn't, has nothing to do with natural light, uh, available light, but still looks fantastic. I mean, that's how lots of lighting techniques have been developed over the years. People just try and wacky things like, like what would happen if I just put this strobe, you know, a couple of strobes or three or four right by the lens of the camera? You know, and then boom, you know, 30 years later you have uh, people um, selling ring flashes, and that's where that started. They just, people were, you know, there weren't ring flashes when they, the effect started to be used in fashion, so. Looking for, and even, even in available light, there's all kinds of situations where you, I'll see something and go, that's very strange light on it, but it's interesting, and then take that into the studio to light an object or a still life or something like that. Lighting is the foundation of everything, photographic in, in my personal opinion. That's what you have to start with is learning how to see the world and see what light does. You see, shadows and light, they are what create and give an image its definition, right. its dimensionality. So the first thing I do when I walk into a room is I take my hand like this and I start looking at the shadow areas on my hand hmm. as I walk around the room and see, is there a highlight on my hand somewhere? Okay, well I can see that there's a little kicker light coming across my hand on this side from the windows over there, and then the main light is coming from this direction over here. So it helps me to see where I want to place my subject in relation to the light source. So Bambi, what are sort of the one, two, three steps that you follow when you approach any kind of photograph? I like clean, simple lines. As you look, when you look through any of my photography, very seldom do you see a lot of background. It's not about the location to me, it's about the face and about the subject. Um, once I have identified the location where I want my subject to, to appear, where I want them to be, the most important element that has to go into it is having my subject forget the cameras there. So I really want to take a personal interest in my subject at that point, look into their eyes and talk with them and, and get them to forget about that monster, the camera that's there, and then really be able to pull from them great expression because at the end of the day, expression beats perfection any day of the week, and if you have the most perfect photograph in the universe, it's a zero if you have no expression from your subjects. The most important thing for me 
is to get them to relax. I don't want them to think about it as a photographic experience. You see, if they start thinking of it in the, the photographic session as a photographic entity, I lose their soul. I lose who they are as a person. I really want to draw from them who they are. So I like I quite often will ask them questions about, you know, what kind of things do they like to do? What makes them happy? You know, just, you know, really questions about, you know, what's your favorite color or, you know, what do you do for a living? And I pay very close attention to the expressions on their face as I communicate with them because small um, things will happen with their mouth or their eyes that will show a little bit of excitement. I find that the more equipment that I have, the more uncomfortable that they become because it becomes a more photographic experience. How about camera angles as far as approaching the subject? Um, that's a very good question. If I'm working with a mature woman, I can promise you I'm going to be photographing down on my subject. So I want a higher camera angle. Um, why? Because women tend to get this little bit of saggy skin under their chin. And if I work from a higher camera angle, it does two things. The first thing it'll do is it'll draw attention to the upper part of the face and not the jawline. And I won't see this area of, of the, the chin area. The second thing that, that I, I will do is I'll have her drop her chin a little bit and look at me with her eyes. Because what happens when she does that is that Looking up with the eyes makes the, the eyes appear larger. Oh, another good thing too, if I'm working with a heavier subject, um, a larger person um, that's got more bulk, then I'm going to um, use a higher camera angle and I'm going to have them lean forward to the camera with their chest.